Hello, how's it going guys? It is Fake Hero. We're going to quickly discuss the upcoming uh, patch notes for 0.94 Legends of Runeterra. This will be their final major uh, rebalance prior to the expansion and release of the game fully. So patch 0.94 features the final card updates of open beta, including buffs to Draven, Katarina and Yasuro, plus tweaks to expeditions and archetypes and some user interface improvements. I'm not going to go too much into detail about the uh, expeditions or the interface, nor will I read through this. Let's just get to the card updates. So now Draven levels up with two axes at the same time. So if you double ax him, he can level up that way as well. The change focuses on making Draven's gameplay dream and level up more re realizable. Is it meant to say realizable? Realizable reliable and satisfying. Draven's overall play rate and satisfaction around his kit are lower than we'd like. Even though we've seen him utilized effectively in certain strategies, we want to provide players with more windows and incentives to use spinning axes on Draven himself, in addition to rummaging them away or pumping other units. I find it really interesting that they're well aware of like some of the decks that uh, players are using. Like when they talk about rummaging there, they must be aware of what happens in the meta, which is good to see sometimes. Uh, my most excited buff is Katarina. I didn't realize it was fleeting, but now her old new text will say play. It will create a fleeting blades edge in hand. It's fleeting though. I was kind of hoping it was going to be a permanent card. Uh, we want to give Katarina a slight increase in versatility, agreed, and usability while addressing a fundamental problem within her play pattern. Trying to use her early can be ineffective as her self-recall leaves you too far behind in the game. In addition to improving her re resonance, her new ability should both up Katarina's power in her current decks and allow her to be played in a wide variety of strategies. I agree. I think uh, Katarina alongside cards like uh, Noxian Guillotine in your deck list now becomes more viable. Noxian Guillotine is a very interesting card and I think as the, in the future as more cards get released that the Guillotine is going to become quite powerful. So still it's a fleeting blade's edge, it's not too bad. It means that later in the game, when you have more flexible use for your mana, um, you could find some use for it. I think it's still going to be pretty hard to find a useful early, like even with the Blade's Edge, it's not going to stop much from happening. Realistically, if you're dropping Katarina, you really want to be hoping to level her up. Another very interesting and powerful buff will be Yusuo's health going up from three to four. This straight up, the difference between three health and four health is just straight up powerful there's so much removal that is around the three hp mark that makes running anything with three hp an argument in itself you saw it being four hp is actually very relevant especially against shadow isles because grasp is a card uh withering whale is a card alongside other cards like vile feast etc and just in terms of the quick attack value it gets a lot better I think just the 4 HP is going to help a lot. Yusuo hasn't quite had the durability needed to be able to fully utilize him as a build around. For a champion all about dicing up opponents, his star line made it difficult to confidently use him in combat, and this change should make Yusuo more consistently, consistently usable throughout more games. Okay, I don't know how insanely different it's going to be. The main thing I notice is to grasp with the undying against Shadow Isles is actually insane. So I've actually been playing a deck with Katarina and Yasuo. I'm sure the archetype's been seen before, but it's just gotten a slight boost. So I'm excited to see what the deck looks like now with these two characters in together in one deck. Uh, so his health will go from to five as well. We'll have to wait and see the relevance of that. Callista will go to seeing three allies die. Uh, not too exciting. I don't really know what my thoughts on Callista is probably minimum. I haven't had much experience playing with her or playing against her, so I couldn't tell you how relevant this is. Uh, but I think taking it back to three allies, if anything, just is the buff, right? Uh, Laurent Duelist power from three to four. Uh, this makes it good i think there's a lot of like cards that if they have like there's a lot of four hp cards 
that are hard to deal with in this game. Whenever I see any unit that has four health, I just, I stress out because there's no easy ways to deal with them. All of the power cards we have at the moment have like three attack or three health. So this being four can help you. I'm just not sure how, but I know being a four is relevant. The Bannerman will now buff all of the allies except for himself. Uh, this is, is good. This is good because like it's it's a nerf obviously, but it's so oppressive when you play this that any form of slight adjustment can give a break to a lot of decks. Like straight up most spider decks, for example, if you're playing against a Bannerman deck and they, they curve out really nicely, you're just screwed. Your units aren't strong enough. And then it's just a blowout sometimes against control decks. Um, how much difference is this going to make it? I'm not sure, but you're going to notice times where you can at least trade into the Bannerman to get it off the field. We'll see how that goes. Blood for blood, uh, reducing down to two mana. Could have some uses. I think this card might be overlooked because maybe in the, this card gets better with expansions as we get more and more units. Uh, this could definitely be used in some sort of combo decks if the card comes around one day, depending on what kind of uh, formats we have. I think making this two mana makes it easier. Like if there's ever a time where you want this to be two mana, it's when you want to be playing, there's an early game unit you want to chuck onto the field that you want to get another copy of. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but in the current amount of cards that we have, there's nothing too exciting you can do with this. Kato the arm will be getting a health increase. This is a card I only started recently having a look at when I started mucking around with the Noxus decks. And then I kind of thought this card seems decent, but you know what I thought was wrong with it? Three HP. <laughs> we don't like three HP. It being four makes it kind of interesting. So if you're going an aggressive deck, I wonder if you consider rearranging your aggressive decks to fit Kato the arm in because what card got nerfed recently? I forgot the name of it, but we all know it. It's the four mana Noxus card that gets a one plus one plus one for each minion on the field. I wonder if you consider swapping it out for this. It's an interesting card and we'll have to wait and see the power of it. The Avarosian Trapper. So health and power goes up to three, three when I'm summoning, create an arranged Yeti in the top three cards of your deck. At least like if you're gonna try Yetis out knock, and you're running this card, which you obviously definitely would be, you don't feel as bad for playing it on curve. This is pretty good. Starlight Seer goes up to three health. This is kind of useful outside of range of Mystic Shot, outside of range of early game Thonomic Beams, depending on what turn you're going. I'm not sure though, when you cast a spell, grant the top ally in your deck, plus one, plus one. Interesting. I mean, if this is a kind of build around card, so see Avarosian Trapper. What? We want to give Rajord more choices when it comes to early mid game options and boost regional identity across its various archetypes. So we've buffed aims at Yeti's deck, buff and ramp. I think like, Starlight Seer seems like a card that you would be building your deck around. So when you're casting spells, you want to be granting the minions in your deck plus one, plus one. So if this card dies in your early game, then it just, just kind of sucks. Like you run this card because you want to get value from it. It's no other reason to play it. So this could make it a bit more viable. But I don't think this is a, this is a fraud spell deck at the moment. Curious though. The warding, the, the, I saw this earlier today, the warding stones goes from uh, zero, uh, sorry, it goes from three, uh, I can't talk. What's the matter with me? Goes to four HP. I'm not even sure if this matters because when you play the warding stone, like your opponents aren't really dealing with it. Like maybe, and you don't really want to block with it, but maybe now you consider taking blocks with it. I'll see what they wrote here. Ramp is an integral part of Fajord's identity. I like how they use the word identity too. Like it's important that classes have their identity in card games. And if a player likes a certain style, they know that they can stick to a certain uh, faction. 
or region as they call it in this as time goes on they'll know like within expansions in the future they can be safe to invest time into this class currently we're observing most big for draw decks forgo ramp completely or plain only catalyst of eons if they do opt for it to make warding stones a more compelling option we're reverting a change we made back at the start of open base so apparently that used to be like what it was so i don't know this loses so much value if you draw it later in the game that the 4 hp doesn't even matter like what do you do with this realistically it gets you to your ramp faster it gets you to your catalyst faster it gets you to your big self faster um it's got 4 hp I, I, just, I just don't know how good that is you just, you just get there with catalyst a shady character so obviously like you don't want this to not be picking a follower but it's got 3 hp for the random times it becomes relevant it's a, it's a really weird thing to take a look at steady character stat line made it too easy to disrupt with damage based removal oh no, 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 no that makes a lot of sense actually it can be interacted with prior to its thing uh, it's important actually this is a really good buff for him our friends of Skidder are down to 2 HP. I think the most relevant, like, I'm sure everyone's already been well aware of the Skidder by now. I'm coming pretty late to the party. But if you want to hear my thoughts on it in short, I think it just opens up Avalanche as a more relevant card for Fajord. And Mystic Shop becomes more powerful in general. Uh, this card will still have its uses where its main go-to is buffing the board and, and uh, di uh, debuffing your opponent's boards. So it still just becomes a three of in most spider focused decks but any other deck that considers running it for like just it's minus one would probably still run it for like i think for the niche decks where they have like a spider package and then they focus on something else like let's say like maybe like a burn aggro deck or they have some spiders or an aggro deck they might consider changing this around we'll see though it makes Avalanche more relevant as a card. The watch list. They're watching Ezreal on Karma. These are important cards to take a look at for the future. I'd like to read what they have to say about Karma. I don't think I want to read about Ezreal because we're... We're getting... It depends how fast... If you guys haven't heard of the Maokai card. Because when Maokai gets released, that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ezreal. Because, like... It depends how fast you can do Maokai. Because if you can destroy the Ezreal's deck, then you can destroy their win condition. Let's say Maokai is too slow for Ezreal, then that's a problem. There should be a world where Ezreal is the combo deck that is the control towards the end. We'll, we'll automatically win the spot. But you need a deck that can match that. Not in terms of aggression. You want another deck that can uh, anti-combo it. So Maokai is the perfect card for de destroying their deck. And becomes a race of two decks, and it becomes a really interesting matchup. I would want to hope that Malkai can outpace Ezreal, because that would totally change the meta and how Ezreal decks are played. Uh, Karma is interesting. All Karma is one of the most flashy and exciting cards in lore. Some strategies we've seen built around it push the limits of what should be consistently possible in terms of insane comebacks or one turn kills. Basically, we love the crazy stuff Karma can enable, as long as it's not too easily attainable or meta warping. For now, we're just closely monitoring the power. I think both these cards are pretty like important to adjust. Only if they weren't bringing out Maokai, okay? Because with Maokai, again, I'm not going to go into detail. We're going to do a video about Maokai. That that that's a card that's needed against these end game control decks that have like the one turn kill. Ways to interact with them is fun. Anyway, I think that'll wrap it up. I'm just kind of really thinking about this, so so I don't want to sound like an asshole for saying that these cards are fine. There's a cycle of a meta here. I have to see what Malkai does. Got some clarity changes. We've got some exhibitions and archetypes, so I'm not going into that. A miscellaneous visual updates. Okay, no issue. Okay. Bug fixes. Nox and Guillotine now correctly indicates that it will create a copy of itself. Okay. 
Anyway, I think I've been rambling on for too long. This video has gone for long enough. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in 0 0.94.